Congratulations! You've just found out you're an ENFP and you are slightly terrified, slightly happy that you found other people like you, that you are normal, and uh, yes, you don't fit in with everyone else. At the same time, you're feeling probably a few things in between. Now, there's also a possibility that you are a veteran ENFP, you've known about it for a while, and you want to get into a little more of the theory and science behind it and be able to apply what you have learned. So I'm assuming that you are coming into this and you want to apply it. You understand how powerful the psychological theories are, and you want some assistance navigating through all these esoteric um, Oh, philosoph uh, psychological terms. So let's talk about the first few concepts here that we need to get into. The first concept is that the ENFP is actually a truncated name for what ENFPs really are, and that is N E F I T E S I N I F E T I S E. Well, what is all that? Well, each one of those two letters, and you should be seeing it on the screen now, represents a uh, psychological preference or what I call function and each one of these are a reflex is a way that you use it in your life and as you go through your life you'll develop them more and more and you become more comfortable using them you'll become better using them and uh, that's the process of maturity and maturation okay concept two is that that using the MBTI um, is uh, well is basically just understanding those functions and how they relate to each other and how they relate in others and how to appeal to them in other people to get what they want. Uh, for instance, the ISTJ, which some of you some of you may know, represent uh, probably about eight to nine percent of the population, is our near direct opposite. Instead of an N E F I T E S I, which we are, they are S I T E F I N E. So just our uh, near opposite. And uh, that's, again, one of the reasons why when you meet an ISTJ, you two will kind of really be attracted to each other as friends or uh, or something more. And, uh, again, that will repulse, but that will also attract you to. Okay, now, concept number three are the shadow functions. Those are uh, the, the bottom eight. Uh, that affect more or less your subconscious and don't really use very well, you don't use very often. They kind of bubble to the surface every, every now and then and, and, and more or less play a role. Uh, there's a lot of debate about this in the online community, whether how much they do, and, and, and especially the per professional community about whether they're subconscious, whether they're not subconscious, and uh, I'm still undecided about this. Um, so we're mostly going to focus on the four main uh, conscious functions, which are the top four functions. Um, concept uh, uh, three is we're just going to bridge upon, we're going to break this up, is actually going into these functions and how they relate. And the first, uh, we're going to talk about on this video, the first two functions that we're going to talk about is the intuition function. Uh, the introverted intuition and the extroverted intuition. Now, you're going to say, what does that mean? Introverted intuition, there's two words, well, that can mean anything to anybody. Introverted, extroverted, into and, and intuition. Well, introverted, just think of this, means inward seeking, in the mind, into the body, inside, okay, reflective, inside. Okay, extroverted meaning out to the world, out to other people, um, out accomplishing things. Okay, so again, um, introverted, to the self, to the mind, to the gut, extroverted, to the world. Okay. Second part of the statement is the intuition. And the intuition, again, depends on who you talk to. Uh, we're going to give a generic definition of intuition. And that intuition is more or less the subconscious. So it's how you pick up uh, subconscious and creativity. It's No one really understands how it works, where it is, but it just just as it's black box. You know. Over the next hundred years, I'm sure we'll figure more of this out. So let's talk about the differences between extroverted intuition and introverted intuition. Again, extroverted has, uh, is, is, I use the example, when you walk into an empty room, you see many rooms. You see possibilities, you see multiple strands of the possible. Uh, you see hidden meanings. You see representations of reality, many of them, all at once, and you juggle. They flash, and you feel them in your head. 
um, you can entertain multiple ideas and beliefs all at once or and you're okay doing that you kind of enjoy doing that it uh, makes you happy puts you at ease knowing that there are multiple ways of doing things um, you also can see how multiple things work together simultaneously. You see connections when other people don't see them. You, it's what we call the ENFP function. Uh, excuse me, ENFP form lateral thinking. When all of a sudden two inane things kind of connect to each other. Um, another uh, residue of the extroverted thinking is creativity. Uh, strategies and concepts emerge also. Um, but not, not in a linear way, but just pow, pow all at once. You, you see a lateral uh, picture. Uh, you also like to brainstorm. And when you brainstorm, you get a feeling about it, and you trust what emerges from the brainstorming. You, you enjoy imagination. You like to play with ideas and multiple possibilities. And one thing that's, that's different about it also is you like change and you enjoy the differences. You actually, it's actually satisfying to see things change and you play with the ideas of change. Um, a lot of people don't like that. So, you, so uh, people who lead with any such as ENFPs, uh, ENTPs, um, have to be wary of that. Also, uh, any again, uh, any is outgoing. It's like you throw your fishing net and pick up the world with it. Okay, the introverted intuition is not so much lateral or broadly but deep vision and understanding of concepts and what will happen into the future what will play out um, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel and then you can work towards it uh, you can make sense the introverted intuition again inward seeking is it pops in your head there are eureka moments so uh, the introverted intuition again yeah, can can just make connections and make understanding of what others see as paradox paradoxical or uh, contradictory it has the deepest conceptual understanding when this is active uh, during a it it will give the owner a paradigm shift so it just pop in your head and all of a sudden you're at a deeper deeper understanding about a subject matter and we'll also often see a new broad level uh, what first seems uh, irrational then comes irrational or excuse me rational uh, what happens is the mind starts getting sucked into a vortex it starts processing and you'll see us uh, INTJs and INF INFJs who lead with this function, uh, who are the, their dominant function, you see them uh, kind of withdraw as their brain power gets sucked into this, and all of a sudden, boom, they're at a new level. It's like switching from third to fourth gear while you're accelerating into a car. Um, this sense of future also gives people who lead with the introverted intuition a uh, sense of confidence, and don't they don't get discouraged easy, so they find it easy to accomplish things, because they, they already have the vision. They already see it. Um, all, um, Let's see. And uh, finally, this vision again uh, allows them to conquer over things that others won't. And uh, NIs, a lot of times, for people who lead with that, again, the INTJs and the INFJs, uh, seem to think in terms of symbols and have these uh, fly in as those symbols represent massive packages of information all at once. Uh, so that's something that you'll uh, and that they uh, have to talk to them about. And uh, they, they again, these ma matrices uh, pack a lot of that in. So a lot of times you'll see them kind of processing and then pop a, a, br a brilliant idea. Okay, so uh, next we're going to talk about sensing and uh, hope you enjoy this first uh, discussion on uh, intuition and the MBTI. Thank you.